everyone. I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. So how does a New York City actress and graduate of Baylor University and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London wind up writing the screenplay for what would become Stephen King's first book and cult classic, Carrie, portrayed in the heralded horror film by Academy Award-winning actress Sissy Spacek and others? And just how do you go from that to bringing pastors of nations and diverse denominations together in prayer and pastoral purpose, all the while penning a trilogy of books that would document heaven itself from the dreams and visions my next guest would encounter. Here to share this and more is its author, former actress, screenwriter, pastoral minister, and author of her latest in a trilogy of triumph, The Warrior King, a battle with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome to testimony a high honor indeed, Anna Roundtree. Mrs. Roundtree, Anna, if I may, welcome to testimony. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> well, Anna, it's great to have you. And I have to say, before we begin, that your revelatory read, The Warrior King, out of the visions God gave you, is a page turner I could not put down and follows your other two authored works, namely The Heavens Opened and The Priestly Bride. In what one could term, as I alluded to earlier, a trilogy of triumph, after having won, as your subtitle reads, a battle with the world, the flesh, and the devil, beautifully written and vividly epic, and yes, just like a movie, only this one is true. But before we get to all of this in our brief time here today, would you share with our listeners, Anna, how you came to faith in Jesus Christ, and what propelled you as a screenwriter for Stephen King to now writing for the King of Kings? Anna Roundtree, please tell us that story. Well, it was, um, they allowed me, the producers allowed me to go down to Texas because they wanted to change the, um, the movie from the book that was in Vermont to a small Texas town. And though I'm from a small Texas town, um, I hadn't lived in one in years and years, and they allowed me to go down. And while I was down there, the uh, minister of a church that uh, that my family went to, uh, they, they were having these, these nightly meetings on Fridays, you know, and um, I'm an Episcopalian, which means that, that um, you're, you're accustomed to thinly populated places <laughs> and, and not many people in church. But the, the place was packing out on Friday night. And he, um, he was having these meetings that were spirit-filled meetings. I didn't know what they were. But the play, people were coming from everywhere to these meetings. And I thought, I'd like to go to see these things. And I, I wanted to go so I could kind of slam them, you know? I really wanted to run them down is what it is right. because I'd become a perfect New Yorker, absolutely <laughs> perfect. <laughs> and so um, my sister and I went, and uh, I really didn't understand it very well. But he had said, you must come this next week because we're going to have someone who is here that will um, be teaching on what you're dealing with in your book. And I said, oh, well, what is that? And he said, deliverance. Well, if he had said exorcism, you know, coming from a uh -huh. liturgical background, I would have understand what he meant. But he said deliverance. And so my sister and I went, and it was 
shocking, to say the least, um, because I, I really didn't believe in any of this. I mean, I was writing Stephen King's book, uh, putting it into a movie, but mainly it was taking his structure that he had and and giving the characters much more life. He had a nice structure. He was very good on structure, but he didn't really know how to write characters in those days. So what I was doing was, was giving everyone character and giving them sort of a backstory, you might say, and and uh, that made them human, made them people, and I, I really wanted it so that that uh, the the parts were so juicy that that the uh, the two leads would go up for an Academy Award, which they did. Yeah, it was quite amazing. I've never heard of a horror show doing that, but um, this one did because I was I was really trying to give them great uh, parts to to play, you know. And um, so uh, when, when my sister and I went to see these, this uh, deliverance, I, I, I was stunned because the lady fell down on the floor and began sort of rooting like a hog. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was like, you know, like that. And I thought, oh, right. my Lord, what is this? And it scared, I mean, it scared New York right out of me of what it did. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I grabbed a hold of the pew in front and got down on my knees, you know, and I said, Alice, bring amazing grace, you know, <laughs> and we, we started, amazing grace. Well, we didn't know amazing grace. I said, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they were, they were delivering this woman, the, the long, uh, dark saliva, uh, things were hooking down on the floor from her mouth. And her face suddenly became a pig's face. And that wasn't makeup. Now, I had seen theater all over the world, in Russia, and I mean, everywhere. That right. wasn't anything I had ever seen. This lady's face became a pig's face. And they, they delivered her. And I turned to my sister. I said, I'm on the wrong side. You know? Wow. I mean, I could tell that that was the truth. Nobody did any makeup. Nobody did any special effects. That lady became a pig in front of me. <laughs> you know, it right. was scary. And um, so anyway, I finished writing Carrie and sent it in. And afterward, um, I came to the Lord because I couldn't understand about Jesus Christ while I was still writing this demonic piece of work, you know? <laughs> I mean, <Right. laughs> writing this and trying to come to Christ, it was weird, you know? <laughs> and I used to take the uh, script to Carrie, and there was a, a great, my, my family was having the house um, redone, and uh, there wasn't very much in it, but an old, old Bible, one of those great big ones, you know? And, um, and I would put, carry a script in it and put that huge Bible on my hip and go to those meetings because I mean I just didn't know you know when you're when you're not saved just you don't know what you're doing <laughs> you're just you are truly lost <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you're listening to acclaimed author Anna Roundtree her latest must read the warrior king Anna please continue you know I did what I could until I got the demonic piece of work out of my hands, and the Lord saved me. He, he revealed himself, and I came to Christ, gave my life to him, and um, I wanted to return to New York. I, I was uh, getting a lot of people saying that they liked the, the screenplay, that they, you know, uh, a lot of people were calling me to do other work and things. I needed to get back to my apartment in New York and my uh, agent who was back there and um, plowing ahead and I went to thank the minister of that church and he said I said is there anything I can do for you before I leave and I always felt sorry to say that I just expected people to ask me for money you know <laughs> 
And uh, he said, yes, you can, uh, you can follow God's plan for your life and accept the gift of tongues. I said, oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, that is definitely. It was one thing receiving the Holy Spirit because that was supposedly your hands were laid on you when you were com- confirmed into the church. But no, this, we did <laughs> not speak in tongues. You did know. you even know what it meant to, quote, speak in tongues? Oh, yes, I had heard people, but I, I thought they were just making it up. <laughs> and and uh, so he said, my sister and this minister and I went to the altar, and we knelt down, and he began to speak in tongues. And, and he said, go ahead, try it. And I just, you know, I, I tried, but I said, he said, that's right. I said, well, I'm doing that, you know. I'm doing it. He said, of course you're doing it. I said, but, you know, I just didn't think. But he said, perhaps you could hear the Lord if you would if you would uh, speak in tongues and then ask to hear him. So I knelt down that night in the, um, it was a place with double parlors. It was that old. It was built right after the Civil War. And uh, I knelt down in the, and I started speaking in tongues, and uh, it started rolling out of me. It was just rolling out of me. I did, I had no idea I could do that. And I had a a white bulldog with one black eye, and he was jumping on me. You know, he was so upset, and I was trying to push him off. And then, you know, <laughs> finally, I was grabbing the dog, and blah, 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 blah. You know, I was saying all these things and going through the house like. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, it, was, it was unreal. Well, it went on for about 30 minutes. And at the end, I said, I know I didn't do that. And the Lord spoke to me. And I believed him. I believed it was the Lord. I had never heard anything like that before. And and I knew, I, it was just so I knew his voice, you know. And um, so... It just so happened that part of what he was saying was that I was going to marry that minister. I mean, he and I never even looked at each other. You know, <laughs> I, I was down there to write a film, and I was going back to my very, very exciting life in New York. And he was in a town of 2,500, you know. But it, <laughs> as soon as the Lord said that, I said, well, this must be the man for me, and I fell in love with him. Because actually, love is a decision. It is not um, it's not feelings as much as deciding that you will love someone. So I I fell in love with him, and I began losing weight and hiding behind doors and giggling to myself. You know, I was just, I was just crazy all by myself. I was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, Anna. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to acclaimed author Anna Roundtree, her latest must-read, The Warrior King. Anna, I think we're going to need more than one segment for all that you have in your (laughs) power-packed, anointed book, which is uh, the third uh, in a trilogy of books that you have written. Um, Anna, the overarching message of your book, The Warrior King, a battle with the world, the flesh, And the devil seems to encapsulate the importance of putting on the whole armor of God as stated in Ephesians 6 and takes the reader on a journey that explores each piece of that armor, why we need it, and what happens if we don't use it. As you alluded to earlier, the woman in that church that got deliverance, her face turned into a pig. And now she was getting supernatural deliverance from God. But as Christians, we can put on that armor so we don't have to go through deliverance. Can you elaborate? Yes. it's um, The armor is God, you know. It says the full armor of God. And and uh, the, uh, the book uh, is, is taken from experiences that I myself had in the spiritual realm, and the Lord used the armor, each piece of it, to replace 
part of the soul life, the flesh, the fleshly soul life, you know? We all know that we're supposed to pick up our cross, which most of the time we have no idea what that means, you know, and uh, and why we need to do that. But the only one who can really fight all of this and fight the enemy is the Lord. And therefore, the the more we have of him instead of our own soul life, our fleshly soul life, the more we have of Christ replacing that soul life, the stronger of a warrior we are. You know, it says stand you. It just it doesn't say uh, get out there on a horse and you know go after them with with uh, everything you've got. <laughs> it's a, it's a, we are standing uh, against. We are pressing against the evil world. And we are uh, allowing Christ because of him in us and us in him. He wins the, the battle. He wins the thing. And that is the reason when they say pick up your cross, the cross is really the standing against our fleshly soul line. You know, the um, wonderful thing that Baptists say, you are... I'm born uh, again. I am. I have been born again, which is your spirit. I am being born again, which is your soul. And I will be born again, which is your spirit. You are, you are replacing the flesh by what they say is the cross. And the cross is to hold that flesh in a place of death. A man on his way to to be crucified, carrying a cross, can't really do very much. And that's what you're doing. You are holding the cross. And as we hold the cross, Christ comes in and fills that space that we would have done fleshly things with. You understand? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to Anna Roundtree, author of her latest must-read, The Warrior King. Anna, to that point, the Word tells us, and I quote, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, end quote, Ephesians six twelve. That said as your latest great read, The Warrior King, so vividly expounds. What, in your view, is Satan's greatest strategy for defeating the saints of God short of killing them? <laughs> well, he, he doesn't have too hard a time, I tell you. He, uh, But he's only, the enemy can only do what he's done before, but we don't really we don't really study the spiritual life like we might the the uh, battle at Gettysburg or or uh, World War II or something like that. We we don't really study it and see what he has done before because that's all he can do again. You know he's he is not near at any time. The the, uh, the throne of God, who is all fresh things, all new things, all, all, you know, all life is in him. So he only has what he came away with, which was a lot, you know, uh, compared to us. We are tremendously uh, naive and really kind of weak. But, but Jesus is the one who is supposed to fight our battles in us. He is the one that does these things, not us. We are there to allow the the flesh life to go and allow him to, to be who he is, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the warrior king. He is the, the uh, everything. He is all things. And at this point in our lives, he is the only thing. 
Amen and amen. And as you alluded to earlier, he gives us the armor that we need to do just that. And one of the tools he gives us is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can you talk about that and what impact that had on your own life coming out of Hollywood, a life of glitz and uh, glamour? You talk about the fallacy of resting one's hopes and dreams on uh, just that and why surrendering to Jesus as our all in all is really the only way to true fulfillment, trusting God for our outcomes in life and in Christ. So how has the Holy Spirit helped you personally to do just that? Well, you, you know, the uh, Christian life, uh, they, they make, the enemy makes the life of like show business, which is really kind of a tawdry business, to tell you the truth. Uh, but he makes show business and that kind of, you know, beautiful clothes, uh, diamonds, jewels, uh, fascinating people. Now, the fascinating people are wonderful, but, uh, you know, he, he makes, the enemy makes all of that seem like the top thing of what you would want. But it's, it's really not. The exciting thing is in the spiritual realm. And you can be, Amen. you know, in lower Slavovia. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you can be way out somewhere uh, by yourself and it be just the most exciting thing because it is you and Jesus and he is everywhere. And it is so, so exciting. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is the one who does that for us and with us. He pours into us the revelation of, of Christ. He pours into us the revelation of, of God's beauty and, and wonder. And it's, it's an extraordinary life when you become a Christian. There's just, there's nothing like it. On the outside, we just look like a, a slight ripple on the water. We all look calm. We all look, um, you know, it looks like we're just bored. But on the inside, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are doing loop to loop because inside where we have the spiritual life, we have the most exciting life there is. And we don't have to have that on the outside. We don't have to be showy with it. We don't have to do things to make people look at us. Now, when we first start out, we're very fleshly. You know, we're truly fleshly because we've come with babies. Mm -hmm. I mean, we begin as spiritual babies. And you don't expect very much of a baby but most people expect Christians, once they become Christians, to be like Christ. But, but we have to grow up the same way other people grow up in life, you know? We grow up in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us on. He provides the test for us. Now, we can't test ourselves. We would just cheat, I think. <laughs> so I think we would probably <laughs> We have cliff notes or something, you know. We we would do it, but but he provides the test as we're needed, as it as it carries us forward. And if we pass these tests, I mean, Jesus had to be tested too, you know. He was right. tested out in the wilderness. we we have to be tested, and the the tests that we pass, we go forward to deeper and stronger tests, which allow us to have more and more of an insight into the spiritual realm. You which think. you so beautifully expound in your book, The Warrior King. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to Anna Roundtree. Just like the characters that you created for the movie, Carrie, uh, I was struck by the characterization and the vividness of the characters you portrayed in the warrior king, the angels, Jesus himself, Satan, the pits of hell, all very vivid. Now, how did God take you to heaven and show you this vision? When did this 
happen. And by the way, you also mention in your book that this third book in a trilogy was saved, actually. Your house was burned by a coven of witches to the ground, and, and they were just yeah. wet and they survived. Talk about that. Well, uh, the first two books, um, it, it happened that uh, I received a prophetic word. Most of the time I didn't receive prophecy. Uh, I don't know. People just didn't prophesy to me. You know, I thought it would be really kicky, but they, they didn't do it. But uh, I, I did receive a prophetic word from Bob Jones, that wonderful prophet. And uh, yes, he said that I would have a visitation uh, on Hanukkah. Well, I didn't know what a visitation was. You know, I was here I was in my 50s at this time, but I didn't know so much of this. I was raised in a traditional church, and there wasn't anything like that. And understanding those things, even as I saw other people doing it, I just thought they were kind of, you know, weird people. And and therefore, you know, would have things like that happen to them. But right. not me. I was just too usual. I was just ordinary. You were you from know? New York. <laughs> I was from New York. It was impossible for me to have <laughs> Right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to former actress, screenwriter, and heralded prayer warrior to pastors of nations and author, Anna Roundtree, whose latest in a trilogy of triumph, The Warrior King, a battle with the world, the flesh, and the devil, is a must-read. You can learn more about Anna Roundtree's work, ministry, and mission by visiting AnnaRoundtree.com and get her book, The Warrior King, at Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. You will be riveted challenged, and given great hope that you too can overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil through a real relationship with Jesus Christ, and powerfully so. Anna, it has been an absolute joy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. For taking precious time to share your jewels of heaven from the treasure chest you've been given. Your journey with Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, and soon coming King is a revelation and wake-up call for us all. To put to death the deeds of the flesh that so easily besets us for the joy that awaits us through Christ in overcoming. Your latest power-packed and anointed read. The Warrior King is a reminder of the how-to through the Word of God, His Holy Spirit, and our willingness to surrender to a Spirit-led life. From the bright lights of New York City to your now cabin in the Carolinas, you make the case (laughs) for victorious living with the Warrior King and powerfully so. We thank you, God bless you. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D.com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensene Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. Testimony.